morning everybody uh, welcome back to the channel <clears throat> it's a bit foggy here so I'm sorry for that I thought uh, it's been a difficult week on the farm we're trying to uh, recloud a building and uh, my father has been very sick so he's been in hospital this week so that's uh, two distractions which kind of taken me away from uh, the arable crops a little bit but um, I just thought we'd just stop and do a little bit of a comparison. One of the systems that we have tried to perfect over the years is our uh, flexi wheat. And uh, going forward, I think we'll be growing a lot more of it. I think it fits in well with uh, cover crops and how you integrate cover crops and wheat. And we've spoken before about cost cutting and how herbicide spend is, is very difficult to control in winter wheat but a bit easier in spring wheat. So here behind me is a field of Lennox spring wheat. It historically has been grown under a Warburton's open field contract but that this is the last year that the contract is available. So we'll be looking to uh, try and market it uh, as just a straight group one uh, going forward so it is a milling wheat and I just wanted to compare the state of this crop to um, we've got a there's a field in between that doesn't belong to us and then the field on the other side is ours again um, but that has got uh, winter wheat X days and I think there's quite a difference really I suppose drilling date this is about a week later than on the uh, than the winter wheat but its growth pro characteristics are completely different so let's take a closer look it's uh so this is a conventional crop <clears throat> i will add how much nitrogen it's received but the big difference is in the growth characteristics of it so a uh, spring wheat doesn't tend to tiller very much as you can see this plant in particular we've probably got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tillers. Um, it hasn't quite the flag leaf hasn't quite come out yet. So it's a very vertical plant. Uh, but it, it grows incredibly quickly and one of the benefits is its weed suppression because it just grows so fast it doesn't tiller out to give weed suppression but its weed suppression comes from its height and in fact grown in a conventional system you have to be really careful with uh, the growth regulators you have to keep them coming on especially in tricky situations like this year where we've had um, cold dry period so naturally the plant is a bit suppressed it receives a whole lot of rain. Now, if we got a lot of temperature, temperatures went up, this would absolutely bolt and therefore controlling it um, is difficult. Now, I heard an interesting uh, analogy from John Kempf in his last podcast, which was uh, high nitrogen and growth regulators is like driving a car with your foot flat on the accelerator and your foot flat on the brake um, and I and I've thought about that and and he interestingly he asked his guest what was uh, the greatest fallacy of conventional agriculture and his guest implied that it was the thought that plants needed uh, as much nitrogen as the industry was telling us that in fact plants needed considerably less and i think that's worth um that point is worth bearing in mind when we go to the next field which is winter wheat but uh, regenerative so um just record in your mind the dark green color of this field grown conventionally and we'll see what it looks like in the next field so I don't know if you can pick it up, but there's a, it's got a sh lighter sheen of green on here. But I think that that's mostly being made up by the flag leaf. So as you can see here, this is the flag leaf coming out. And in fact, if you come a little bit back, 
so let's say this one you can see the ear just about to emerge so that the flag leaf is is still fully vertical at the moment and i think that's what's giving it slightly lighter color but really this crop has only received uh, 15 kilos of um, foliar n it's due its second application of foliar n um, in this t2 slot it's had no fungicides yet it had a pre-m zerton top up but um, other than that it has had 220 ton applications of compost one in spring 2020 and one in autumn 2020 after the crop was harvested previous crop was all seed rape and um, I think it, it definitely benefited from the stubble rake to control weeds overall uh, not too not too shabby there's a bit of black grass actually strip in the corner I'm running out of time otherwise what I also like to show you is just in the field next door we've got an organic uh, trial plot um, for their live wheat program and it really has some very interesting the difference in weed control characteristics of different varieties really come out very clearly so anyway uh, this uh, crop is making progress and uh, it's probably uh, one growth stage further progressed than the flexi wheat which was planted next door so let's just revisit that nitrogen uh, issue the point is if conventional soil nitrogen achieves just say 50% utilization to make my maths easy but it's generally 40 to 60% utilization so let's say we're talking about 50% utilization so this crop has had 15 kilos which is a hundred percent available so so is the claim by the manufacturer so this has had th effectively 30 kilos whereas the other crop next door will be having nearer 200 kilos um, obviously we will see when it comes to yield about how much whether that was enough nitrogen i have done a calculation for how much organic how much nitrogen that those compost applications will generate i think it works out at about 30 kilos but i'll put the answer below so really here we're talking about seven times less nitrogen in this crop than in that conventional spring wheat and my thought is that if we can push this winter wheat yield up to let's say seven and a half then really I'm very happy to make that compromise that half a ton compromise to ensure that my wheat is uh, pushing the limits as far as it's maximizing its utilization rather than a crop like uh, the one the, the conventional one where we are maybe applying 200 kilos but only 100 kilos of it is available if we're using we're spraying foliar in and we're utilizing every kilo that we're applying surely that has got to be better for nitrates and water quality than that lost 100 kilos so that's it'll be interesting to see and we'll continue following it through to harvest to see where we get to as far as that seven and a half eight uh, ton aspiration but that's what i'm that's what i'm pitching for uh, so we will see and uh, yes report on